we now have what you call a global village. We are interlinked to the whole world. What happens in uh, in Russia and what happens in uh, Ukraine affects the region, affects us. Because of the price of fuel, as a result of that incursion, has moved from originally what it was when Donald Trump was there, which is less than a year ago, from $36, $37 a barrel to today $120 a barrel. You had when we were in the market, people were complaining that the price of soap has gone up. This is a result of uh, this complication. When you see wheat, uh, the, you like eating chapati, the price of chapati is going to go up because the largest producers of wheat are Ukraine and Russia. Russia is the second largest producer of, of uh, oil, which you use for transport. And any time the price of oil goes up, like it has gone up, you know that even your shirt, the cost of your shirt will go up. The cost of soap will go up. The cost of whatever food you eat will go up. The cost of, of construction will go up. So that war affects Teso. That conflict affects the whole world. What is my view? I think the best way would have been the de-escalation. A peaceful settlement of this conflict. Because the third world, which tends to remain unaligned, needs to note that peace is very important because during the First World War and Second World War, they're using what you call basic weapons. The largest they had was the Katusha, uh, which uh, was made by, or what they call, they call it the Stalin organ. It was used against Hitler by the Russians, because the Russians are the ones who defeated Hitler. Because of, they attacked uh, uh, Russia during winter. Uh, Hitler attacked uh, uh, Russia during winter and USSR was able to mobilize very quickly and wipe them off. In that war, millions of people lost lives. Millions. This, if there is a third world war, this could be the end of life. Because Russia has got the largest number of nuclear warheads in the world, <coughs> followed by United States of America. Now, therefore, it is important that the third world is part of this effort. That war, which was initially between the West and the East, drew in um, non-aligned countries or countries like us who did not want to be involved in this war. But where we have reached now, I think it is important for people to note that we do not want war, we want peace. That is our direction. Africa does not want war. Africa wants peace. And we call upon the two uh, countries working with the NATO to see to it that they de-escalate the problem and give the opportunity to a diplomatic and peaceful settlement of this arrangement. The European axis needs maybe a new security structure to guarantee both sides that there is no threat against humanity on both sides. I think that uh, most people, all those th parties must climb down from their high horses and really face the problem head on. This is, not a this is not an issue as simple as it was like invading Iraq. This was not as simple as an issue like uh, NATO getting into Libya and approaching Gaddafi. You are dealing with a nuclear-equipped <coughs> nation like Russia. And I want to assure you that this matter is not as simple as it is. It is a matter that we must take seriously. It is a matter that people must not look at lightly. <coughs> it is a serious matter, and it can be able to wipe out civilization and human nature from this planet.